Hello and welcome to the 59th video in this series for beginners programming in C. So this video will be the first of two, maybe three videos looking at header files and this is a response to um, a request I had uh, via the channel to have a look at header files. Now unfortunately I don't want to do this in one long video because it'll probably go well over half an hour um, and it's uh, not as it's a topic that when you when you first start programming in C appears very complicated because you can end up with some very cryptic compiler errors, but actually is very simple. And I'm just going to delete these lines, two lines here from the code I've already prepared because I forgot to when I was preparing for this video. But what we have is inside our project folder, so definitions.c and definitions.h create those empty files and a main underscore two and a main.c respectively. And then what I've got is, is the code in main2 and main is almost identical. It's basically the skeleton program, printing start and end. And this one says main1, and then main2 says main2. Now I just want to make absolutely sure everything's okay. So I'm just going to compile main.c and call it main1. And I'm going to compile uh, main underscore two dot c and call it main two. And let's just run main one. Okay, I can assume main two is also okay. So we've got main one start and end. So we're good to go. So header files then. Why and uh, what are they? Well, header files are files that define um, functions or variables or macros um, that we then use uh, in other parts of the program. And the best example of this is already in every program we've done so far in the series is we've included a header file called stdio.h. That is a standard in out um, for C in a header file. And the reason we're including that is because inside that header file is the definition of our printf function. And the, re the reason for doing this should, from that alone, be be absolutely clear. The point is, is that we're always going. Every program usually wants to um, print the output to the console, and it makes no sense for the per the programmer to have to write their own print to the console function every time when it's something that's done as standard. So C already comes, or the compiler suite already comes with this header file, which defines our print f for us. A more applicable example um, that I can think of straight to mind is the Flappy Robin series I've done um, with Cocos 2DX that maybe you've had a look at. There we do a number of things uh, logging to the console, so things like there's a rectangle structure defined in Cocos 2DX which has an origin x and y and a width and height of the rectangle and often you want to print a rectangle to uh, the screen and initially that involves going print f and then rect and then the percentage point to f, and then four of those, like so. So you've got the rectangle, and it becomes quite a pain to have to type this out every time you want to print a rectangle. So an easier thing to do is to make a function, and then just simply put that function in a header file and include that header file then wherever you need it. And this doesn't then just apply to one program, and this is why we've got two lots of main here. It means you can reuse that then in other programs. So just as a short example in this video, before we go into more detail in the next one then, let's imagine that we have a, a function here, uh, a program here, and in this program we have um, get my uh, urgent number function here defined inside our program and we'll just return 10 for now. And then we want to use inside this program we're going to print our urgent number to the screen. So just put a percentage D, delete this and get my urgent number. And you can pretty well imagine I'll just go and quickly compile this program uh, just to make absolutely sure everything's working but I've compile main, run main 1, get my urgent numbers now printed to the screen. Now let's imagine that we have another program we're writing, which is the main score 2.c, and that also has to do exactly the same stuff that's inside uh, get my urgent number. Now, okay, the example here is a one-line function, but imagine it's a large function. There's lots of calculation, I don't know, something, some physics calculation with some rotations and forces. And this is a game that uses that calculation, and then this is also another game here that uses the same calculation. Well, you might end up doing this 
very good. Now this, this program also does exactly the same thing. It can use its own get my urgent number and everything works. But as you can imagine, if this was a big function, it starts to become a pain if you need to reuse this again and again your programs to type it out each time. And especially dangerous is if, imagine it is a physics calculating function and you find out six months down the line that there was an error inside your calculation and you need to change this calculation. If you've done it this way, copying the function, then you'll need to go through every single example in all of your programs and change by hand the same part of the code. As you can imagine, that becomes dangerous and more likely than not, you'll miss something. So a better way to do this is to actually put this function inside a header file. So I'm just going to cut this function out of main.c and I'm going to delete it entirely out of main underscore 2.c and we're going to put the function inside definitions.h like so. And then what I'm going to do is just type include and def definitions.h like so, can't spell, and also do that in our second program, main2, and now bring across the terminal and just compile main1, and now I'll compile main2 if I can find the compile, and now let's run main1, and now you can see it's still calling the get urgent number function despite the fact that it's not declared anywhere inside this source file, it's declared inside definitions.h and exactly the same thing is for main2 if I just bring back the console and run main2 again main2 is finding the function and doing all that stuff so you can already see hopefully the powerful application of having your code contain in its own separate files and then you simply include the header file to be able to use the functions or whatever definitions you have inside that file at a later date. Another example might be that we include a definition here so we have something like define uh, version like so and we'll say it's called version uh, 1.1 like so well, this version is now available to both of these files. So what I can do is I can say percentage %s here and version like so and do exactly the same thing inside main. So percentage %s and version like so. And if I just save those files then I'll compile and run again. I know this is very slow and step by step, but it's important. I just compile main and now run the programs again and now we've got version used as well as you can see for both main 2 and main 1. However there's one last thing I want to talk about before I stop this video and go into more detail with header files later on because this is this definitions.h is not a good uh, header file particularly this section here and at some point you'll need inside your header files to include some headers in your header files. You should keep that absolutely to a minimum but eventually in larger programs it will need to be done and that's when you start getting into problems because you can never redefine the code for something twice inside a program. If I put this function in here twice and then try to compile here, so I just bring the terminal back things don't compile because it's previously defined. So when you start including headers inside headers, things start to become difficult. So in, to finish off this video, we're going to take this function here and we're actually going to put it inside definitions.c. And then inside definitions.h, we're just going to make a declaration of the function. So the compiler, when it compiles, whenever it comes across the include definitions.h, and I'm just going to copy that, knows, even if it hasn't come across definitions.c, that this function here is returning uh, an integer, not taking any arguments, it's seen the declaration, and it can already then make the space available for printing out this integer, in this case with printf, to the console. So it defines already the memory available with the declaration, and we'll just wait then to find the code definition of the file at a later date, which is here. However, what we do need to do then is include definitions.h in this way. So if I real compile the program now it won't compile. And the reason it's not compiling is we still need to include the definitions defini 
Actions source file, otherwise things won't compile. Now you can see that it's compiled, and if I run main one, then we've got everything done exactly as the same before. So you need to remember to include the source files. Interestingly, we can also do this, and if I just compile compile the program again, you'll see that the program compiles and runs as expected. And the reason is you can actually you shouldn't, but you can actually declare the same function so long as there's no body with it as many times as you want. The compiler just says, yes, I already know that's declared. Um, I'm waiting to find the code. The body, however, you can only declare once. So I'll just delete this one definition here and leave it in this format. So that's an initial explanation or introduction then to header files for you. And like I said, there's more to talk about, particularly when we start including headers inside headers, because we end up with problems of things being redefined. But we'll start covering that in the following video. So hopefully this has uh, made sense in the introduction and see you in the next video.